Hey, welcome to another mass transit video. It's been over two years since I did my first video on Mediator, and to be frank, I haven't really talked about it since. Um, full disclosure, I've never used it. You know, it was, it was an ask, it was an easy to do, and you know, beyond some test cases, I really haven't ever had a need to use it because typically I build distributed systems. That being said, I thought it would be worth taking some time to kind of go over how Mediator should be used with mass transit. And these are the simple use cases because honestly, once you get out of the simple use cases, you have to really question whether Mediator is the right solution for you. And so I'm gonna show you some of the basic stuff and it's gonna be the current code base. So, you know, it's using the latest bits. Uh, the video two years ago, I think the configuration of Mediator was even different. So I just wanted to kind of go through this, give you an idea of how it works and kind of go from there. So I have created a simple API just using .NET new web API, and I've added a reference to mass transit, the latest mass transit package, and I'm using add mediator. So this will set up mediator, configure the container, everything you need it to do. And in this case, I'm just adding all the consumers in the consumers namespace. The consumers namespace just has a few projects in it. I have one consumer. And that is my inventory consumer. I'm keeping this very simple. And this inventory consumer uses this new base type, which is only in the develop branch at this point, but it just kind of cleans up the syntax to people who are migrating from like mediator. And it just says a simple override task inventory status, get inventory status, cancellation token. Boom, done, simple. And right now I'm just returning random because I don't care. Um, Let's look at the message type. So get inventory status. This is the request that's sent to this handler. It implements this request type, which is a type within the mass transit meteor namespace only. And I would never use this outside of mediator. This is purely a mediator affordance. It's why it's in this namespace. Um, and all it does is just say, I have a request of T. That's all it is. It's just simple. Uh, it, but it's saying the type that's return, the expected return type for this request. And I think this is similar to other solutions. So get inventory status is a request that returns an inventory status, which is just a SKU with the on hand. So a super simple request response through Mediator. Um, the handle method, perfectly acceptable. I could even rename this to inventory handler if I wanted to. I don't care what you call it. I just, I'm used to consumer. And all I'm doing is just returning a random value. So I've configured this up in the program and then I have my inventory controller. Now my inventory controller is depending upon Mediator because I'm using Mediator. Um, mediator is registered in the container as a singleton. So there is no lifetime scope with this. It's just Mediator. It's a single instance. Everything around it is single instance. Uh, and I'm gonna use this send request method to make the request, pass the get inventory status, get the response back and return it out the controller. Now this is a helper method in here. It really just does some things for you. Typically it just calls the create request with the request, gets the response, configure await, all that fun stuff. If there's an exception, it throws the actual exception from the underlying type. All is good, great, grand, glorious, super exciting. Um, and this is meant to just make it match the behavior of other mediator use cases and other solutions that people use. So the controller is super simple. I have the inventory controller. I can say get inventory. It comes back and says, oh, look, there's 749 on hand. Now there's 811. It doesn't matter. It's a random number. But it's letting me use that mediator to decouple the implementation of the inventory consumer from the inventory controller. Again, super simple use case. How mass transit works under the covers, I can cover a little bit. You know, the because like I said, mediator is a single instance. Under the covers, the way that consumer is getting created, it's actually creating a container scope, resolving that consumer, doing that consumer's work, and then returning the response back to the from the send request method. So super simple path, request response. It is not using the scope of the controller. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. Some people like to do that and I'll cover that later. Um, but for now, just very basic. The scope is managed by mass transit. It creates it, it executes the consumer. Any dependencies it has, whether it's a DB context or an HTTP client or anything are managed within that consumer lifetime scope. 
and it's all cleaned up and disposed before the response is turned back to the controller. So, so a complete decoupling of anything that you would need. No shared information, shared state between the two. So that's just a simple consumer. Now, Mass Transit also has a, a state machine saga library, uh, library. So it lets you create state machine sagas. And to demonstrate that, I've created a separate project in this. And this will all be on GitHub and linked in the bottom of the description. So look below if you want to see that. Um, and this, I have an order state machine. And this is a pretty s simple state machine. It's actually not processing an order, but you know, when you submit an order, it's going into submitted and it's responding with an order status. I'll cover that, you know, order status requested. It has several different events that it observes. Submit order, get order status, and cancel order. And those are referring to the HTTP verbs that are in my controller, which are simply post, get, and delete. So, very straightforward mapping of that. The state machine is handling that behavior. I'm essentially just transitioning between states. And then I've created an extension method, respond with order status, which just lets me have that same behavior of respond async with the order status that's used across all of those different handlers. So I use this a lot. I, I typically create like an extensions method class underneath my state machine so that I can have nice descriptive behaviors without having to like cut and paste between different events and different uh, states. So pretty good pattern to follow. I like it, it's super simple. But this allows us to use a state machine via mediator without having to you know, deal with message transports and things like that. So the controller that uses this state machine is the order controller. And like I said, three verbs, post, get, and delete. And all it is doing is calling mediator.sendRequest, submit order, get order status, or cancel order. Again, the whole lifetime scope and all of the loading of the Saga instance by that order ID is all handled by Mass Transit under the covers. Uh, and then because I have that extension method that returns a response for each one of these, every interaction with the Saga returns a response. So super clean, super simple. Uh, submit order, all of these things just have an order ID on them. And I'm actually using a initializer, a module initializer. So module initializer is new in, I think, .NET 5. It runs whenever this package is loaded. And I'm just using that to tell it that submit orders correlation ID is order ID. So this makes it so that I don't have to go into the state machine and can custom define the correlation for each of those events that comes in. Um, yeah, so super cool. The, State machine gets initialized with that order ID, and any subsequent messages with that same GUID are going to go to that same state machine. So if I go back to the, to the Swagger UI, which we're all super friendly with, I can go ahead and I can create an order by using post, and it comes back and says my order status is submitted. And if I go and get the status of that same order, oop, no, get, execute, we can see that submitted is still the status. If I go down here and delete it, I can now see that the status is canceled. And now if I even go back up and get the status again, I can see that it's canceled. So all, it's always correlating to that same Saga instance with that same GUID and it's loading the appropriate state each time. So pretty cool, works like a champ. I think I can even delete it twice and it just says, yeah, you've already deleted it. So there's no change in state. All of that's handled. Um, in this example, I am just using the in-memory Saga repository. You could just about, you could use any of the repositories you want, whether it's Entity Framework Core, Redis, MongoDB, whatever. It, it doesn't matter what it is because MassTran is going to handle and coordinate to those individual Saga instances based on that order ID. And again, that's a very simple case of I want to use a state machine to handle some behavior and I want to just control that through Mediator and I don't want any of that stuff into my controller logic. So that's all I wanted to cover in this first episode of this mediator series. I will go into some more complex use cases, but I'm gonna warn you, I don't recommend complex use cases for mediator. You know, one of the failures that I see a lot of people do is they're like wanting to manage scope or wanting to have everything in a global scope. And then they're wanting to do a producing events. I will cover producing events from some of these components and how they will actually be able to execute in their own scopes and how to pass that around. But again, 
later episodes. This is just a very basic setup and implementation of doing request handlers via a mediator using Mass Transit's mediator. So I hope you enjoyed it. More to come later. We'll catch you on the next one.